Hello and welcome to my video all about how to knit cables. Now when I was learning to knit I really liked the look of cables but I thought there's no way I'd ever be able to do those until I'm an advanced knitter. And especially if you look at some pattern charts they look ridiculously complicated. However this video is aimed at beginners who would like to give it a try because it's really not as difficult as you would think. Although it's possible to knit simple cables without a cable needle, I would very much recommend using one because it's just easier. Here you can see a couple of different cable needle designs that you can get. Often you'll see that people use just a double pointed needle and that's a perfectly acceptable way to do it. However, there are also needles specifically designed for the purpose. The use of a cable needle is simply to hold stitches out of the way, sort of in reserve. And in this particular design, the stitches will be held in the central part where it bends out a little. I started out by using this style of cable needle and compared to a double pointed needle, which is just straight, it does hold the stitches a little bit more reliably. However, I then tried these hook shaped cable needles and now these are my preference. The reason I like these best is because I just don't have to worry about the stitches accidentally falling off it. Saying that, everyone has their preference and the best thing to do is to try all of the options and then decide. The reason cable needles come in many different sizes is that you're supposed to pick one that's the same size as the knitting needles you're using or preferably a little bit smaller. On the front of this packet in particular, it recommends which size knitting needles to use with these cable needles. And I'm personally going to use the biggest one I have because I'm using particularly chunky knitting needles for this demonstration. The cable needle is quite a bit smaller than my knitting needles However, it'll work perfectly well, so don't worry if there is a bit of a difference. You just don't want the cable needle to be bigger than your knitting needles because then it will stretch the stitches out. I'm now going to do a demonstration showing you how to do a simple left slanting cable. I'm going to knit the cable in stockinette stitch, which is the most popular choice. And I'm going to surround the cable with reverse stockinette which is also a very popular choice. The reason you often get a stockinette cable with a reverse stockinette background is that there's a good contrast between the look of stockinette and the look of reverse stockinette and it just makes the cable pop out and look more prominent in your knitting. And that's normally the aim. You put all this work into a cable so you want it to stand out. There's no rule to say you can't use a different type of stitch for the cable or for the knitting around it. However, it'll just give a different effect. For instance, if you use stockinette for the cable and the stitches around it, obviously they'll blend together a bit more and the cable won't stand out as much. Sometimes you'll see one by one ribbing stitch used and that's normally in order to create a reversible cable design. Okay, so for this demo, I'm using some very chunky needles and yarn, and I've already cast on 10 stitches. You'll no doubt find that the first couple of rows of a cable pattern don't involve doing a cable. They'll just be preparation rows. In my case, I'm going to be doing a four row pattern repeat, where rows one, two, and four are just simple knit and purl patterns. And then row three is the cable row. So you only have to use the cable needle every fourth row. The more rows you have in between every cable row, the longer or the looser the cable twist will be. And the fewer rows you have between the cable rows, the tighter or shorter the cable twists will be. In this pattern, the first and last three stitches of every row We'll be creating the reverse stockinette stitch which will surround the stockinette cable. And obviously the middle four stitches on every row will be creating the stockinette cable. 
you'll usually find that cables are made from an even number of stitches, where half the stitches are passed over the other half using the cable needle. However, this is of course open to experimentation and creativity. Okay, so let's get started. The first row represents the right side or the front side of the knitting. We're first going to do three purl stitches. So the yarn is at the front and we do three purls. As I said before, the first and last three stitches are creating the reverse stockinette stitch. If you want to learn more about the reverse stockinette stitch, then feel free to have a look at my other video that's all about this technique. And then the central four stitches are knit stitches. So the yarn goes to the back first, and this is the beginning of the stockinette cable. A cable is nearly always made with an even number of stitches, where half the stitches are passed over the other half of the stitches to create the cable twist, as we'll get onto a bit later. Then the yarn comes forward for the last three purl stitches. And then we get on to row 2, which represents the wrong side or the back of the knitting. Normally, the wrong side of cable patterns involve knitting the knits and purling the purls. If you want to learn more about that phrase, then you can watch my video on the subject. But basically, if you look at the left hand needle now, you can see that the middle four stitches have little bumps of yarn right next to the needle. And the outer three stitches don't. Those little bumps of yarn are often called purl bumps. So looking at this row, you can see three knits, four purls, three knits. So for row two, we're going to start by knitting those first three stitches. So we're going to knit the knits. And then we get to the four stitches with the purl bumps. So we're now going to do four purl stitches. And then the final three stitches on knit stitches. And now we're on to row number three, which is the first cable row. You'll find that cables are always made on the right side of your knitting. As you may expect, the first three stitches are purl stitches. And now it's time to use the cable needle. When it comes to knitting stitches off this needle, we're going to want it to mimic the left hand needle, so it will need to point to the right. Therefore, when the needle is hanging at the front or the back of your work, the longer side will need to be on the right, like so. So during this next part, you'll need to keep the long side on the right hand side. We're now going to use the short side to slip two stitches purlwise from the left hand needle to the cable needle. So you take the point on the short side and take it down through the front of the top stitch on the left hand needle and transfer it to the cable needle. And then you do the same again. So down through the front of that stitch and transfer it from the left needle to the cable needle. The reason you do this purlwise is so that you don't twist the stitches. Now, one important thing to note is that where you hang this cable needle dictates whether the cable you're making will be a right slanting or a left slanting cable. If you drop the cable needle to the back, you'll create a right slanting cable, also known as a back cross cable. Because I want to make a left slanting cable, otherwise known as a front cross cable, I'm going to drop this cable needle to the front, like so. And because of the design, it will just hang there without you having to worry that it will fall out of the stitches. I'm now going to use a sports analogy for the first and probably last time in my life, and I'm going to say that when I do cables, I like to think of the cable needle as like the subs bench at a sports match. So when you want some players to sit out for a bit and take a break while the match still goes on, then you put them on the subs bench. 
and then they can join the match again later on. And that's what the cable needle is like. You put some stitches onto the cable needle just to keep them out of the way for a little bit and then you can bring them back into the knitting later on. And this is how you manage to twist stitches around each other to create the cable twist. So now you've put those stitches to one side, you're now going to do two knit stitches. Make sure the yarn is at the back behind the needles when you do this. Okay, so now we're going to bring those players back into the match and we're going to knit those two stitches off the cable needle. To do this, we slide the stitches to the end of the long side of the cable needle. Some people let the left hand needle drop, but I don't like to do that, especially when I'm using chunky needles, because it's very likely the needle will fall out of the stitches. So I keep holding the left hand needle at the same time as holding the cable needle in the same direction. I then basically use the cable needle instead of the left hand needle and knit those two stitches off the cable needle like so. Then you can put the cable needle to one side. Then you bring the yarn to the front of the needles again to do the final three purl stitches. And that's your first cable row completed. And now we're on to row four, which is the same as row number two. So we do three knit stitches. Then four purl stitches. And then three knit stitches. And then we do the four row repeat all over again. So back to row number one and we do three purl stitches. Then four knit stitches. Then three purl stitches. Then the second row of the repeat, which is three knit stitches. Four purl stitches, then three knit stitches, and now we're on to the cable row again. And I'm going to show you an alternative method if you're finding it difficult to knit the stitches off the cable needle. So to begin, it's three purl stitches. Then you slip two stitches purl wise off the left hand needle using the short side of the cable needle with the long side towards the right. Then you let it hang at the front. Making sure the yarn is at the back you do two knit stitches and instead of doing what I would normally do which is sliding the stitches to the long end of the cable needle. You instead slide them back to the short end of the cable needle and then hold the cable needle as you did when you were picking up the stitches in the first place. You then use your left hand needle to slip the stitches from the cable needle to the left hand needle again. and put the cable needle to one side. You then simply knit these two stitches as you normally would. Even though this method involves an extra step, you might prefer it if you're struggling to knit from the cable needle. And then to finish, it's just three purl stitches. And then for the final row of the repeat, it's the same as row two again. So it's three knit stitches, four purl stitches, 
and then three knit stitches. And that's the second repeat of the pattern completed. And you can just repeat those four rows over and over again. In another swatch that I knitted, I did four pattern repeats. But for the first two repeats, I only did one knit pill row in between every cable row. So the cable row was happening every other row. So if you look at the bottom of the swatch, you can see that this resulted in a tighter, shorter twist. For the top two twists, I did the four row pattern repeat that I previously demonstrated, just for comparison purposes. And that's one of the great things about cables. There's so much room for experimentation and for creativity. You can alter the type of stitch you use, the number of rows between each cable row, the direction of the twist and all sorts. There's loads of things you can do. The last thing I'm going to talk about is tension. Now tension in knitting is how tightly or how loosely you knit and it's often a problem. I personally am quite a tight knitter and with cables in particular it's very difficult to control because cables involve twisting stitches and that tightens up the stitches and can cause problems, especially in contrast to the knit pearl background stitches. I've seen different people give different advice. Some people say knit the cable tighter than the rest of the knitting. I've seen people say knit the cable more loose than the rest of the knitting. And basically it's just practice and seeing what works best for you. I knitted this swatch where I purposefully tightly knitted for the first half and then I loosely knitted for the second half. And you can see that the cable is a bit more compact and tight in one half and then in the other it's looser and bigger. So it obviously does make a difference to the look of it. And one more thing I want to point out on this swatch is that if we look on the right hand side of the cable, there's no looseness around that side of the cable. However, on the left hand side of the cable, you can see that the stitches are looser. Now it's perfectly normal to have a hole in your knitting at the side of the cable at the point where the cables twist. That's perfectly normal and you don't need to worry. As you can see, you can't really even see this looseness from the front of the knitting anyway. So it's not something to be really worried about. It's just something that will come with practice. Also, a lot of things can be solved by blocking your knitting. And the holes and the looseness will be a lot less obvious with a smaller yarn and smaller needles. If you have the same issue as me, where one side of the cable is looser than the other, then there is a simple trick that could help you. And I'm just going to demonstrate that now. Because my issue is on the left hand side of the cable, I know that this problem arises when I transition from knit stitches to purl stitches and not the other way around. So every time in this pattern where I go from knit stitches to purl stitches, I do the following. So as an example, on the first row, I do three purl stitches, then four knit stitches, and now I'm going to transition from knit stitches to purl stitches to do three purls. So I go into the stitch as I normally would for a purl, but instead of wrapping the yarn around the needle point as I usually would, I wrap it the other way round the needle point and complete the stitch. This simply helps to tighten up the stitch a little bit. And I do this every time I go from a knit stitch to a purl stitch. The purl stitch is always wrapped the other way. So then on row two, I do three knit stitches. Then I move on to the four purl stitches and the first purl stitch, I wrap the yarn the other way round the needle point. 
and then the rest of the purl stitches are just normal. And then I finish with three knit stitches. And that's a simple trick. And if I show you this swatch here, the first pattern repeats I did without this trick. And then the pattern repeats you can see towards the top of the knitting I did using this trick. And you can see that it's definitely tighter now on the left hand side of the cable. So that's just an optional extra if you have the same issue with unbalanced tension that I do. But to be honest, it's really not worth worrying about because from the front, most of these tension issues can't be seen and blocking your knitting will solve most issues. Okay, so that's pretty much everything I want to say about cables and I really hope that's helped you. I'm going to be doing a few more videos about cables in the near future so I hope you'll join me for those. Thank you very much for watching.